hi guys this is rona lee welcome to my youtube channel thanks for coming back if you're new thanks for subscribing or bumping up on my page if you're returning i love you thank you thanks for subscribing we hit 100 subscribers <laughs> yesterday i said that i was so excited you know guys let's get the numbers up please subscribe like share and watch here yeah, watch it's in the watching even if you don't like what i'm saying just play it let it be plain <laughs> oh yeah so today i'm going to be talking about my um um not well struggles here yeah, struggles that i faced as a newcomer in canada uh my first few weeks first few weeks here yeah, the things that shook me i'm going to be talking about them in this video so please like again share and um, thanks for coming thanks for listening to me so yes um if you're coming to canada and then um it depends on where you're coming to we were coming here to mountain like i said it was provincial nomination we didn't know anybody here nobody yeah nobody so we chose moncton here so Moncton is a commercial engine like the lagos so to speak of new brand new brunswick yeah <laughs> it's not lagos so it's boring no? okay but it's like lagos so you can imagine how the other places will be so yeah we chose uh Moncton and then of course we didn't know anybody so we uh, we knew we we're going to be paying for or staying in an airbnb we chose airbnb over hotels i think airbnb is a little more expensive than hotels but we chose it because you get your privacy then you can cook i don't like oimbo food so i mean i had to be able to cook so we opted for a one bedroom airbnb which was very expensive like uh, i think it was about for seven nights it was about seven hundred dollars there about yes usd not cat this time around so um we stayed for just one week we booked for one week i was telling my husband that are you sure one week is going to be enough you know because from what i've heard and you know from research i heard it's always better to book for about two weeks so i mean it can give you ample time to do all you need to do the running arounds and everything but we said okay yeah we're going to go for <laughs> one week gege. so yes we paid for one week and we got there hmm. okay the first thing that shocked me we went in a, in spring like towards the end of spring i think about june early june yes yeah. so they said people on the groups i was they were like don't carry winter jackets you're going to waste your kg don't carry it's getting warm it's getting eh? Eh, people of god we got here we landed at about 3 a.m in the night the cold that slapped me. Pow! Yeah! Where's my winter jacket? Okay, look, my winter jacket here, Larry. It did not even do anything, but just imagine that I did not carry it as, as I listened to them. So we got a taxi. Um, we got two taxis. My load is more. Tell me, I confess. I, I know. I agree. So <laughs> we got two taxis, like a van and another taxi to take our load to the Airbnb just give the taxi guys the address and they took us there um so um we slept it was we got in on a saturday night and then yes like saturday morning friday night truck saturday morning yeah so we slept we woke up we woke up on saturday pretty strong and then in the evening around three o'clock we took a stroll to we're just strolling we needed to get out we needed to get sim cards we needed to be able to call we needed Okay, there was internet in the um, Airbnb, so you could, but we needed to call to move around, to get things done, to get our SIN done, to get um, oh, to get things up and running, because we had just one week, so we had to be, it was a rat race. So, I mean, okay, let's book taxi, you need a phone call, you need a, num you need a number to call them. Okay, we just started strolling, let's stroll now. We now saw a Congolese guy, very nice guy, Mr. Frank. So... He he was doing his lawn and then I just said, okay, let's meet this guy. He's an African person. We didn't even know he was Congolese. So we met him and he offered to take us to the store, Walmart, to get our uh, SIM cards. Yeah, so we got the SIM cards and we were able to call. On Sunday, we went to church. We met another lovely couple. 
who they helped in easing our, you know, stay and all that, in easing our settling in. So um, on Monday, we went to Service Canada. That's where you get your SIN, social insurance number done. Because that's, I mean, that's very, par that's one of the most important things you need to do when you land in Canada to get your social insurance number. So you need to book an appointment. But, well, we did not book an appointment. We went there directly on Monday, on Monday morning, yes. So when we got there, there was this guy. We queued, we queued up. I mean, the queue was not long. It was just about six people in our front. So we queued. And there was just this guy hell-bent on pursuing people home. Like, that was his job. His job was just to make us go back home and register and come back and book an appointment and come back on another day. We were like, don't worry. We are Nigerians. We will wait. <laughs> is it not this mock you? Is it not this just seven people in our front? My worry, I'm a duro. So <laughs> we waited, 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 and we got it done in you know, under about two hours. Our scene was ready. So I mean, yeah, we did our scene on Monday. On Tuesday, we went to Service New Brunswick. That's where you get your um medicals done and your child benefits. Yes, in Canada, they pay child benefits. As soon as you arrive as a permanent resident, they start paying you money. <laughs> well, not immediately, but you know, you have to do the processing and all. And then even if it comes in late, they pay you the backlog, backlog of since the day you landed in Canada. So we went to service New Brunswick the next day and then um, we couldn't do it. A challenge was we didn't have a permanent address. They always need your your like um, utility bills to be sure that you are staying in that apartment. So we didn't have any. Uh, we're still in the Airbnb, so we couldn't get all that done. We went back to the house. So we now began house hunting. <laughs> People of God, it was it was tasking. It wasn't easy. So they are, um, and here in Canada, they use um, Facebook Marketplace a lot. So I was on Facebook Marketplace from morning till night. There was another um, website, Kijiji. So Kijiji and Facebook Marketplace, but I felt more comfortable with Facebook Marketplace. I mean, I, mean, I don't know why. So, I mean, I got a lot of agents, booked a lot of appointments. We went, we're just wasting cab money. Guys, cab money is expensive. If I calculate all the amounts we spent on taxi, it reached to buy car. So here in Canada, they have, in Moncton especially, they have just one bus system, which is Kodiak. And then it's just that bus system that operates the whole of Moncton. How feasible is that? At times, you have to wait for about 30 minutes before you get a bus to where you are going to have. If you come to Canada, be prepared to buy a car. It is a necessity. It's not luxury, especially like we came in summer or towards spring. You need to come, get a car before winter because if winter starts and you don't have a car, I don't know how you're going to do it. But it's a necessity. Even if it's one small kete kete that will just be carrying you up and down, you need it. A car is very necessary. So, I mean, we were going to see all sorts of apartments. Hey, I saw some like this. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this one looks like Nigeria. Anyways, we're seeing mostly basements. I saw beautiful basements. And at um, at some point, I think it was already on Wednesday, and our Airbnb was going to expire on Friday. We had not gotten anywhere. We had not gotten any leads and all that. I was already breaking down. Now, what's this? Do we have to pay another Airbnb money? Or what's gonna okay fine even if we're gonna pay I, I now ask the lady that you know the owner of the Airbnb and she's like oh from the day that we stop our Airbnb another person has booked it so what do we do if we don't get an apartment we start packing our loads and looking for another Airbnb or another hotel till we get an apartment what's gonna happen hey so you know i just kept on and i was just praying oh, god please just let me see something let's see something so i now saw an airbnb um, a basement i was already tired we had paid for it somebody now called me like from one of the groups it was like okay what's what's going on i told you to call me you did not call me i don't like disturbing people particularly so he now said okay first advice he's going to give me is not to collect a basement because basements um um gets really cold during the winter and then all your utilities are going to shoot up especially the hydro that's the heat it's going to go up like you'll be paying a lot getting the place warm because a basement is like underneath the floor like you are inside the floor 
so it's going to get really cold and then it's all beautiful as you're seeing it in summer you can see the windows but when it's um winter snow snow will block the whole windows and you don't get to see outside so it could get depressing also so i'd already paid for the <laughs> basement and i had to call the agent i'm like hello brad can is there something you can do for us we don't want to take the basement and i was already scared i thought it will not change it will not thank god we had not signed the agreement it was just about preparing it that was thursday i couldn't get hold of brad for the whole of thursday sorry so on Friday, I was able to get a hold of him. I'm like, okay, Brad, please, I don't want the basement again. Although I paid. Can you look for something else for me? Like a first floor or, you know, something that's not basement. And he says, okay, he has a three bedroom. He's going to show me. I'm like, I don't need a three bedroom. I just family of three. I need a two bed. He's like, okay, let's see. So I'm like, okay, well, let's just go and see it. So we went and we saw it. And it was just... The amount was just about what I paid for the two bedroom basement. So it was, was a miracle to be honest. Like it was just that Friday morning that we saw it and we liked it. And you know, it was just fine for what we needed right now. It was a three bed for the price. I would say for the price of a two bedroom. Yeah. Houses are um, relatively cheap in Moncton compared to you know compared to other cities compared to your Toronto your expensive Toronto <laughs> so for a three bed I mean we got a three bed for 1300 card that's reasonable in it yes yeah, so we got it it was a miracle and we were able to move in on that Friday we ordered the bed we had to go pick it up um the next day I <laughs> I ordered some couches on um, Facebook Marketplace. Yes, so I had to. I met this Pakistan guy who was very helpful. So he had to, you know, here in Canada, another shock. You do everything by yourself. So when I had to move the couch and everything and the bed, I'm like, I need a truck. So you go to the trucking company, which is U Haul, you go and rent a truck so i call them i'm like okay i'm coming to rent a truck when is the driver come to pick me they're like hello you come and drive it by yourself <laughs> i'm like i'm not really driving my own toyota auto drive truck eh if you see the truck i'm like okay how do i do this and you have to have their own license here to be able to even put a car talkless or truck on the road i made a a friend um hamed a pakistan guy so i called him oh, hello hamed can you help me and he's like okay so he helped me we went we picked up all the stuff and then yeah so we set up little by little and then yeah that was um a struggle and so far but we're settling in very well and then god has been faithful so next time see you guys i'll talk about the culture shocks that i've faced in my little stay in Canada. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about that in my next video. So till then guys, love you, subscribe, like, and share. Bye.